Hello everyone, welcome to yet another episode of Codrus Wealth Lounge Podcast. And my name is Adenike Omiyali. I'm the head of Mass Affluent Sales at Codrus Asset Management Limited. With me, I have my colleagues. Hello everyone, my name is Kofo Rola. I lead the private wealth management team here at Codrus. Hi everyone, my name is Reggie B. Asuk. I'm the wealth advisor at Codrus Asset Management. And we have our guest here today. His name is Arnold, and he is our Chief Investment Officer at Codgers Asset Management Limited. Hi. You're welcome, Arnold. It's a delight to have you here on the show. And uh, it would be nice for us to just hear a bit about you. You can okay. include your name as well. Okay, sure. Um, I'm Arnold Dublin Green. I'm the Chief Investment Officer of Codgers Asset Management. I'm, um, I'm uh, an emerging markets, frontier markets professional. I've been in the capital markets for about 15 or 16 years. Oh, wow, that's nice. um, I'm trading and investing across the continent as well as Southeast Asia and other emerging markets globally. Oh, interesting. It's good to have you Thank here. You. Thank and you. I can imagine the wealth of knowledge you have. And I mean, this podcast is going to showcase how okay. much, you know, we can no learn from you. And I mean, let's just kick start with the <laughs> first question. Okay. So, I mean, given the recent global economic shifts, yeah. right, what trends are you observing in terms of cross-border investment opportunities? Um, I think the main... Um, trend or the main topic in everyone is, is inflation right. so we're seeing global inflation not just here in nigeria but across the pond in, in europe and in america um so inflation i guess america being america i mean almighty dollar when there's inflation there I means um the, the the bond rates and yields are high in america so we're just going into a so I see a strong dollar environment. That's one of the reasons why we're seeing a, a, a weak narrow. Not the reason, but, uh, as much as we have our infrastructure reasons, uh -huh. there is also a strong dollar going on right globally. So we're just not the only ones expecting or going through a weaker currency. You have Argentina, you have South Africa, you even have China having a weaker currency versus the dollar. So that's the main economic trend that, that's happening globally. Right, right. Thank you so much for that. Um, so what, what are the key factors that drive investor sentiments and decision in a rapidly changing global market landscape? Okay. Um, I would say it, it, it just depends. Um, if you look at global, you look at global, global trends, you look at the, econ the economic environment, um, you look at the milestones of the things you want to achieve as an investor, um, and then you kind of figure out how to go with the flow. So if you look at um, we just we talked about inflation, global inflation. We talked about a strong dollar. You want to be going into um, something like a U.S. equity market, the U.S. stock markets, where you have, um, you know, you have uh, index trackers that track the S and P that allows you to benefit from that. And then whatever choices that you have as an investor, whatever your risk profile is, if you if you're more on the low side in terms of risk, you can go into U.S. bonds or U.S. dominated bonds. Um, if you like a bit of risk, you can go into U.S. equities, or you can always have a medium of 50-50. Of so it depends. Each investor, um, it, it just depends on on what they want to achieve, what their personal mandate is for themselves, mm -hmm. what the personal target is for them, and, and their risk profile as well. Right. Uh, there you're talking about diversification, right? I'm talking about exactly that, right. diversification. I mean, yeah. Okay, so even talking about diversification, yeah. I've, I've noticed a trend with high net worth individuals lately. Okay. And I saw something just yesterday. I think the um, founders of the, one of the top law firms, they own a private office. Okay. So like a family office. Yeah. And also I've noticed a trend with um, high net worth individuals where these private offices now do like more private equity. Yeah. So it's your family office, yeah. but they're not just investing in like regular assets yeah. like your bonds yeah. and euro yeah. bonds. So what do you think um, are like other opportunities that H&S can look out for okay. with investing aside from like normal vanilla bonds? Sure. Um, I mean... If I look at Nigeria or even global, the emerging market space, which I know, there's a, there's a, there's a fintech trend going on. Oh, right? absolutely. And then the fintech trend, right. exactly, mm -hmm. the fintech is taking advantage of the informal economy. So yeah. I'll call it unbanked, underbanked, yeah. um, or businesses that aren't registered or don't mm -hmm. have access to, to platforms or mm -hmm. can't, can't get a loan. So you can have um, venture capital 
firms or private equity firms taking advantage of fintech companies that take advantage mm -hmm. of that um, that sector. Mm -hmm. So in a sense, I like the fintech sector, especially when, when you look at Nigeria or Africa, where you have a big informal economy and it's, the informal economy is slowly getting formal. But whilst the, the trend of informal to formal is slow, mm -hmm. you can still take advantage of um, a, a, a small business that needs uh, uh, some sort of wallets or payments. Mm -hmm. um, and that's where the fintech space comes in. So, I mean, as a as a high net worth investor um, that you have the capital to go into these sort of spaces, you can actually go direct into these new fintech companies or you can find a private equity firm that allows you, so, where someone does the work for you, mm -hmm. someone does the homework, someone looks into the company, someone kicks the tires for you and you just give them some money and then they invest it for you. But I like the fintech trend that's going on in our, in our space right now. So that's why you come in as a chief financial officer for a huge night client who comes to coaches and say, oh, I have this amount of money, yes. I've done this investment, I've brought yeah. properties, but I want to do more like Different. private equity mm -hmm. so yeah. you can do that kind of yeah. they can come to you and then yeah. get that kind of stuff. exactly that i mean that's what we do nine to five that's right. our job mm -hmm. you know your clients are busy doing what they need to do with families or work mm -hmm. whatever it is our job is to wake up in the morning come to the office and look for investment opportunities mm -hmm. and manage the money so okay. that's what we do Good. So, yeah. Arnold, right, yeah. taking into consideration the ongoing trade dynamics okay. globally, yeah. um, what advice do you offer to potential investors yeah. um, to navigate the in um, international trade? Um, so, for me, right now, I'm I, I like I like us dollar assets right okay. so oh yeah but i hate to say, say that again sometimes. you can say that again <laughs> I, hate, I hate to say it you know uh -huh. i'm here and, and it's naira and it's nigeria but I the know. dollar is king and it's the mm, almighty it dollar really right now is. so in everything you're seeing in, in all the global the geopolitics going on going on around the world in ukraine and russia the niger coup oh, yeah. the trend that you're seeing is a strong yeah. dollar mm. you know so even when even when you look at uh local nigerian assets that are priced in dollars mm -hmm. even if because of the niger coup or whatever it is we lose you might lose a value in mm. the assets mm. if the assets is priced in dollars mm. you've still made money absolutely. and on absolute returns because of the strength of the dollar and where the dollar is yeah. going so for me almost regardless of where you are in the emerging market space or on the continent or in nigeria mm -hmm. um, with whatever's going on geopolitically politically whatever mm -hmm. trades going on mm -hmm. um you have to look at dollars you have to also look at safe havens like gold Oh, yeah. It's very good now, oh, yeah. um, especially when things are shaky mm. everywhere. So people going to safe havens like dollar assets, dollar mainly dollar bonds mm. um, and gold. Mm. Um, and also sometimes when there's a bit of a rock globally mm. around the world, there's oil. Oil looks good. Mm. Um, so sometimes if you have a way to get into uh, an oil assets or oil investments. Mm. Um, even here in, the, in, in, in Nigeria, we have um, companies that issue dollar bonds, oil companies that issue mm. dollar bonds. So you you you, you enjoy the upside and the dollar side, oh, yeah. so you enjoy yeah, the like upside and the oil side, like Seplat, yeah. exactly, yeah. enjoy. So, there are, so those are the sort of assets that I'll be looking for and, and I advise my investors or we try to put money in, into. Okay, so in the equity space, right? Yeah. Um, are there opportunities internationally yes for yes investors to consider definitely um i mean there are there are funds that um have products called a tracker fund or index tracker fund okay. and it goes against your busy high net worth individuals oh, that yeah. don't have the time to mm -hmm. look at these markets so there's an index there's a there's an s p s p is a standard and uh 500 so america's 500 biggest companies mm -hmm. there's that index mm -hmm. um there's a FTSE 100 which goes into the united kingdom which mm -hmm. is 100 the biggest 100 companies in the uk mm -hmm. so that. you can have a fund that there's nasdaq you can have a fund that manages that tracks yes. these indices yeah, yeah. so you don't have to stress yourself out with looking at these things and trying to trade and trying to figure out what's an apple apple stocks doing or meta's doing or mm. alphabet's doing okay. you know that this is a fund manager it's just tracking the fund mm -hmm. you just watch the news when you can you sit back and you watch your money flow so uh, those are the kind of opportunities i'll look at so i'll, I'll speak to a fund manager okay. that yeah. can give you access to these mm -hmm. markets mm -hmm. especially on an index because you know you don't you have fund managers try to you know create something called alpha where you beat the index mm -hmm. but where the market is going right now you don't need to you don't need to knock the lights out you don't mm. need to you just just track the index mm. it goes up it's making money you will okay so yeah. locally are there like opportunities like what kind of investment products should people okay so consider? so locally especially with us we, we provide something called the codras dollar fund which yeah. i like <laughs> um it's 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 a fund that um that has local dollar assets as well yeah. as african dollar assets mm -hmm. but it's priced in dollars so regardless of what the naira does oh yeah <laughs> <laughs> you know you know that you're okay yeah. and and those are the kind of assets i like um and 
capital. So we, but also, you know, to talk about Nigeria a little bit more and Naira assets, I, I like the money market play as well. Oh, yeah. It's short term, the yields are good. Mm -hmm. It's liquid. Anytime mm -hmm. you need your money, you can get it. Um, so if you have a fund manager that can that can look into liquidity, re really liquid assets as well okay. as dollar denominated assets mm -hmm. um, locally, uh, like I said, there are companies, that, local companies that issue mm -hmm. dollar bonds, including our banks here, do oh, like yeah. Access Bank, Fidelity, mm -hmm. um, Echo Bank. Mm -hmm. They offer uh, dollar assets mm -hmm. or yeah. dollar bonds, mm -hmm. and they're still based here. So you know these banks, and mm -hmm. you know how they're doing. Mm -hmm. You know whether you like Access Bank or not, so whether you're relationship manager is an active <laughs> fool or not, and you know, you know, and yeah, and yeah so it, those are a bit easier plays and easier access as well. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, we've talked so much about inflation already today, okay. but, you know, we cannot overemphasize the um, effects that inflation has on yeah. the economy and also yeah. on our investments. Mm. So, you know, uh, can you provide insight um, into the potential effects of inflation and interest rates? You know, um, it changes on the yeah. global investment decisions. Yeah, it does. I mean, locally and globally. I mean, Inflation just sometimes means we're getting poorer. Oh, so yeah. It's the past. Say that again. <laughs> 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 that's yeah, point. that's, and I, I like that. I like that you yeah, say that because yeah. it's reality check for yeah. us. You know, some yeah. people don't really understand the effect on yeah. their income. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, they yeah. just assume that, oh, it's inflation. Okay, it's, we're just yeah. buying food more expensive, but then your disposable you're income is thinning you out. You are. Yeah. So the, the, the amount of money your, your thousand naira can buy today mm -hmm. is different mm -hmm. from so last year. Even if your earning power increases, the inflation does everything. Exactly. We all like to pray for wage growth, right? So yeah, we all okay. like to pray that our, our, our bosses say, yeah, you know, I'll yes. match inflation mm -hmm. to you. But so yeah, I mean, what the not. best way to, to, to work through inflation is to invest. Oh. That's the best way I can put it. Yeah. Um, and on the other side, if you look at inflation as inflation means that the price of your assets are going up yeah. and you see equities and assets. Right, so if inflation is going up, that means the equity market price is going up. Yeah. So the best thing to do is to invest in equities, because mm. naturally, high inflation is supposed to be a high return on equities. So that's right. one of the best ways I would I'd advise to. I mean, I want to call it an inflation hedge, but it's it's a very simple way of defining inflation. Is either you see yourself as I'm getting poorer, or asset prices are going up, mm. and equities and assets to buy assets. Mm. Oh, yeah, fantastic. that's how I'd say. I mean, I wanted to just even take it to our brothers, Ghana, okay. and with everything that happened yeah. with their Euro bonds. Like, what's your take on that? Do you think that they're going to pay? I mean, I know that nobody's hearing anything from them. Yeah. They've been quiet. Yeah. But for clients who have investments in Ghana Euro bonds, what, I mean, what be Yeah, you I mean, I mean, they have to pay. What's your word of comfort? Oh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't have any because like, we're all in Ghana. I mean, we, we, we were, we are all in Ghana. Um, I think they have to pay. Mm. Um, they have to pay. Ghana they have to pay. They have to pay. pay. They have to pay. Oh, okay. They most <laughs> probably will. I think what oh, they're yeah. trying to do is figure out. So they defaulted or they, they defaulted on the local bonds as well yeah. as the Euro yeah. bonds. So we local bonds, I guess, it's easy for them to figure out because locals, they can mm. talk to them. We can yeah. figure it out, guys. Let's just go together. It's going to be tough, but let's buckle. I'll recapitalize the banks if it goes. Pension funds have got you on the, on the Euro bond side and the external debt side. It's outsiders. So it's a, little bit of, it's a little bit of a harder conversation and it's dollars as well. Um, I think they've asked for a 30% haircut. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. um, I mean, yeah. that's progress. At least they're communicating. Yeah. But that was last year. We haven't heard from them since last year. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, the thing is, they... more communication every year. <laughs> so, I mean, they have to pay, and I think they will pay, but it's about figuring out the discount or the haircut that oh, yeah. they can afford mm -hmm. and then coming into a conversation. I mean, if you look at Zambia, Zambia asked for a 45% haircut, which, oh, is, they, which is a lot, but they got, and there was, a, mm -hmm. there was some understanding, and it took mm -hmm. two or three years. I know. You've said so many um, insightful things today for something. Has been on my mind, you know, during the course of the conversation. Okay. So there's so much going on in the global space. Yeah. There's so much of global um, volatility going on. So, in light of the global market volatility currently, what strategies do you recommend for managing risk? Okay. Why pursuing returns? Um, I think that um, we have to be cautious in this environment. As much as I'm optimistic. I'm cautiously optimistic. Uh -huh. <laughs> you know, I that think makes that, sense. yeah, okay. I think there are times to be aggressive and happy and, and mm. go in and put it all in and you know go all in black because you know it's going to go up because it's a good time. Everybody has money, there's liquidity in the markets, you can get loans from banks, from countries. This is the exact opposite. This is the time when there's no liquidity. Mm. This is the time when interest rates are high. There's mm. high inflation. Mm. Um, so much uncertainty, wars and rumors of wars. Um, the the naira is weak, the dollar is strong, and sure. China's we're, we're, everything's falling apart. Yeah. Um, so for me, in this sort of environment, I will 
look more for safer investments. Mm. I would look more for, I would look at bonds. Oh, yeah. Uh, look at the local, fixed, local bonds? I'll, I'll buy money markets. Right. I'll buy, the money, I'll buy money market paper. Um, I'll buy dollar denominated bonds as well. Right. I'll do that. Um, and if I can, I'll buy some commodities. I'll, I'll, I'll buy gold. Right. Um, so it's, this is a safe haven play. So right. um, I'll still have some, some aggressive risk risky stuff like some equities mm -hmm. um i have some nigerian stocks i like some stocks out there i like the bank banking stocks oh, are good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. i like oil and gas stocks i like oil and gas bonds as well um i like the agric stuff I like a komu I like presco the palm oil guys oh, yeah. so i would have some of those but i'd probably be if i had to if i had if i had uh, a, a thousand naira for example i'll, I'll put 300 naira in equities and 70 naira in, in a lot more of the safe haven assets oh, right. yeah that's that's how i'd look at it it's just this this is just that time where yeah, yeah this is just that time where you have to be um careful right and you so have to be you, so would you say so what would you what would be your advice to an investor should the person do like 70 percent fixed income 30 percent equities or what would you advise? My Pay advice would be give me your money. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and I'll do work for doing. you. Okay. I know what I'm doing. My name is Arnold Dublin Green. Oh, yeah. I'm a investment officer of Cordial Asset. Tell him, tell him. I know what I'm doing. That's tell my him, advice. Tell him. Tell him. Because I'll ask you a question. Yeah. <laughs> but I mean, I mean, that's it, really. It's, it's a time to, to sort of tighten. Mm. You know, it's a period of austerity. Mm. Um, so it's a time to, to, to pay attention to what you're putting your money to now. Wow. You can't just buy anything and it goes up. Mm. You know, you buy the right companies, you buy the right bonds, mm. you put your money in the right places, you mm. buy the right assets, mm. you make sure you kick the tires properly. And if you can't kick the tires, you give it to someone that can kick the tires. Right. Someone that has a team of people mm -hmm. kicking the tires daily. Mm -hmm. um, but this is the time for that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, I mean, what factors, um, what role do the geopolitical factors play in terms okay. of the attractiveness of an investment, especially in a country as volatile as Nigeria? Yes. Yeah. So what what are the factors? Like what roles do these factors play yeah. in terms of the attractiveness? So it's interesting. When I got into the market 15 or 16 years ago, we didn't really care about politics and politicians. Mm. We cared about businesses. How good is a business doing? Um, it, it was, you know, if you have a good business, a good idea, you invest in the management of the company, you invest in the CEO when they're doing good, it was making money. And I've watched this trend change to politics. Politics and policy control markets now. Oh, yeah. That's crazy. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. When, um, First of all, the market reacted to is during like the last or this year. Mm. The first time was when um, former Sibian governor, what's his name oh, now? Emefili. Emefili. When Emefili mm -hmm. was removed, yeah. Why is this started agreeing? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then when Tinubu became president as yeah. well, before yeah. he was even yeah. sworn in, yeah. the market was, was reacting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That didn't used to happen mm -hmm. before. Now, now. Yeah. it's changed. So I mean, that answers your question. So politics, geopolitics, this and politics and policy role. makers make a huge, yeah, make mm. huge, huge. So unfortunately now I'm having to have an opinion on, on politics and policies. Right. I'm having to figure out if someone is going to run for president, what does mm. he stand for? Mm. Whereas back in the day, mm -hmm. he did what he did. Mm, the companies whatever. did what mm. they did. Now it's the, 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 the political so environment. Is exactly. he yeah. yeah. to the president? Yeah. And, and, does he have legs? And, and, yeah. Yeah. And, and what policies is he going to put in place? Yeah. yeah. Is it be policies. Yeah. Be pros? Mm -hmm. it, it cements infrastructure. Does it like yeah. oil and gas? Mm -hmm. Does it like banks? Yeah. You know, so mm -hmm. now that matters. So he, he created, unfortunately or fortunately, it, it, it plays a big part in decision making now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as an investor. So yeah. that's something that you would hugely consider when you yeah invest. yeah so I definitely cons I look at I look at politics I look at um, geopolitics I look at uh, countries relating to, to, to themselves because we live in a global world now the world is getting very very global um, Russia's fighting Ukraine Nigeria ECOWAS might fight Niger how does that affect my investments mm. you know so everything is so connected and now is Russia back in Niger or is France back in the coup and it's <laughs> You know, yeah, everything is connected. Yeah, mm -hmm. Everything is now connected. So unfortunately, mm -hmm. or fortunately, we have to be smarter now where we really, we really look at the world in a global scale. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the Chinese um, real estate market is falling apart. It's affecting the price, price of the South African rand mm -hmm. because of iron ore exports going from South Africa. Oh, wow. So that, we have to look at everything mm -hmm. now. And that's where we are right now. We have to look at the world to make decisions for one country. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. 
it's a lot so it's it's a lot. Lot. Yeah. yeah well so we've had a very robust conversation today mm -hmm. you've gone granular on you know the global and local economy mm -hmm. yeah and i guess i mean we've learned a lot today and same with our viewers mm -hmm. but let's just ask this question to just wrap up this session okay so um what role do you think um fund managers play mm -hmm. you know in um in um H um high network investors yeah. um plans yeah. and how what kind of qualities would you advise that they look out for when they are picking their fund managers i mean you know what i'm going to say right look look for me so i know <laughs> i mean that's a no-brainer first of all i mean like i just explained how complicated and, and wide everything has gotten mm. and um, i can't imagine anyone that has something else to do in the nine to five mm. spending the time doing this it would take it takes all of your time of course it so does. i think you should look for a, a fund manager um or an asset manager that specializes in in in, in the class that you're looking for right. you should look at their historical performance mm. um although historical performance isn't necessarily or always um a signal or a tell for how tomorrow is going to yeah, be absolutely but sometimes you know it's a guide it's a guide yeah. if, you wanna, if you're trying to date someone you ask them where were you like in your last relationship yes <laughs> yeah, to figure it out. and then you, you have to bank on them to tell the truth they also don't mean that it might be a rubbish yeah. relationship oh yeah you know what you're getting into oh yeah you know? so yeah. that sort of situation because you're, you're 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 dating or you're marrying your asset manager so yeah. you need to know what kind of uh, what, what, what what's your temperament and yeah. okay then you have to figure out as an investor or mm -hmm. as your high net worth investor have to figure out their temperament as well mm -hmm. uh, do they want to be more on the risky assets yeah, or aggressive or mild or mm -hmm. low risk mm -hmm. and then there's also the communication right mm -hmm. so not everyone knows what they want so your fund manager should be able to bring it out of you mm. yeah. should be able to say okay this is what you're looking for oh, yeah. Yeah. yes exactly so it's so all like those things so just exactly things. exactly mm -hmm. so you need someone who knows their mm -hmm. beans who knows mm -hmm. his stuff so and, i like to yeah. use the word tailor-made yes so yes. based off of your need yes you can just 100 uh, yeah 100 percent. yes exactly that yeah, yeah. Um, thank you so much, Arnold, thank for coming for to this me. show. It's been very insightful. Yes, I'm going so to much. call you because now I need you to manage I'm my phones. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, because you're eight <laughs> channel. <laughs> 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 okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. So thank you. Thank We've you come to the me. end of this session. Thank you. Um, yeah, and that's it. Thank Goodbye. You. See you thank next you. time. See you next time. Bye-bye.